Well, it is important to study uh, what is going on with our patient in order to establish how to proceed. Because we might think, or he think, what the indication are, especially in athletes. For this reason, we, as uh, was mentioned before, we did a consensus, an Italian consensus conference of femoral to tabular impingement in athletes in 2019. We were still uh, divided in two, Sia uh, Gascot and Sia. Now we're one big family. And you can see here, I'm here, Alessandro is here somewhere here, I think, over there. Uh, we talked, we closed in a room, we talked to figure it out what to uh, say to our patients because athletes are very demanding. So uh, first, one of the uh, questions where it was, what is the return rate to sport? Well, most work uh, in the literature, they talk about high levels uh, uh, patients with a return to sport at about uh, 73 to 93 percent with most of the work uh, talking about uh, per high percentages higher than 82. Uh, but what's the return rate to the same pre-injury level? Because this is important. Not all the works distinguish between returning to sport and returning to sport to the same pre-injury level. Most of them, they talk about uh, rain, um, um, 80 percent level. Only one Scandinavian work reported a lower, uh, less encouraging result at about 57. So the literature is with us, but um, there is a differences between pros and non-pros in terms of returning, and this is what the literature says. The re the pros. Reach values are over 90%. You can find it in the literature. This is some example. And there is uh, no difference between amateur athletes and recreational athletes. There's no difference in returning after um, treatment for FIA with values that goes from 90 to 60%. So what we do is we basically treat this patient and we... Uh, think that they're going to return the sport and how we treat it. Well, the, the technique, it's not different from uh, regular, uh, you know, um, hip arthroscopy. Uh, you see here, uh, uh, there is a, this is a pincer impingement. This is a common impingement. We basically address the, um, uh, the, the, the coxofemoral uh, uh, with the same procedure you have seen it before. We remove the pincer, we check with x-rays. The same thing we do with the femoral uh, side with the common impingement. We check moving back and forth. So this is crucial in order to make sure you're doing the exact thing you plan to do during the um, preoperative uh, evaluation. And once you have chosen where to remove the cum, you actually move the hip. So if it's still there, then you continue. So that procedure is basically the same. It doesn't differ from an athlete to a non-athlete. And then you check at the end. If you're confident with what you've done, then you're basically uh, over with the, with the scope. The only big difference in athletes in Italy is the anesthesia. They prefer general anesthesia instead of uh, spinal uh, anesthesia. This is because I think they are afraid of what is going to happen to their back. Literature doesn't say anything about it, but I'm telling you, this is what it's very different from uh, pro to uh, a recreational athlete. What are the pronostics evolution of the surgical treated athletes? So what we're going to tell them when we see you have to go under surgery, how long is he going to play? Well, a many study published do not have medium to long term follow up and they don't really report if there is a worsening in performances or in the parameters in these athletes. 
so the, the, the consensus ended up saying that we need to learn more about it in order to establish what to tell this patient. Well, we uh, looked at our um, uh, cases. Uh, we were interested in this subpopulation. So we look at uh, this uh, population with three endpoints, return to sport rate, clinical improvement, and degree of correction. We uh, uh, took a look at um, athletes from 2017 till 2019. And the, uh, they were 28th pro with min age of 21, uh, 17 males, 11 females, uh, with a minimum follow-up of 36 months. Of course, most of them, they play soccer. We're in Italy, so that's the, that's the sport. And our findings were very interesting because you see here all the uh, tables. Uh, they improve at about three months. They reach the best uh, score at about a year. I'm, I'm sorry, I shall go back. And then they stay at the same level at the latest follow up. So at 36 months, not much of a difference. This is the, the best uh, way to see it because this is the HOS sport, so we actually tell the patient how, how you're doing during your uh, period. And they have a good score, so the, the, the tables told us that the pre-injury level sport activity uh, was still at the same at 36 months for 85% of our population. Uh, th there was a reduction in the level of spark activity for about 40, 14% of our athletes and no one stopped playing. So this was important for us to understand better what to tell the patient uh, when he comes to us and ask. So in conclusion, we can say that Athletes represent a very special population. They're often very demanding, but they're very diligent. They're very resilient. They do what you tell them to do, and they're gonna follow you as long as you need to. Keep preservation contributes to lengthening their career, especially when we talk about the pros. Uh, there are there is a literature, very uh, big literature in clinical outcomes with high return to play rates, but we still need to know what it's going to happen in years. Um, biologics may help improving outcomes. This is one thing we need to know. This is a big talk. We should, we can have a special uh, talk about this. Uh, we are starting to uh, use biologics uh, constantly in our athletes and see if there's going to be much of a difference. Thank you.